Hi everyone, welcome to this second video in this very exciting series of revisions on the Cambridge IGCSE English Language. So this is focusing on the extended paper and particularly on question two. Um, so if this is a question you think you need some help on, then keep watching. Okay, first really important thing to think about, just like for question one, is the timing. So it's worth 10 marks, question two. So using the two minutes per mark rule, you should spend about 20 minutes on it. Um, there are two parts, A and B, so it divides up quite nicely into 10 minutes um, per section, and you can keep a good close eye on your timings and make sure you're not running over. Um, a word of warning about this one, because it's a nice systematic question, there's always a lot you can say about each point that you're making. So you could go on and on and write loads. Um, and don't be tempted to do that. Remember that it's only worth half as much as questions one and three. So just focus on saying what you need to say rather than what you need. So what's nice about this question is that it always follows the same format. So it will always start with reread the descriptions of and part A will point you to one paragraph. Point B will point you to one paragraph. And then the wording of the main part of the question is always the same. Select words and phrases from these descriptions and explain how the writer's created effects by using this language. So first thing, obviously, is to make sure you are focused on the right paragraph and only focus on the relevant sections. What's even kinder of the examiners to do for you is they even give you the first words of that paragraph so you know you're looking at the right section. Then you want to be thinking, right, what are you actually looking for? So you're focusing on paragraph four or paragraph seven, and you go through and you look for any descriptions of the appearance of the clouds and the atmosphere before the storm. So you're just picking out the relevant things for this question, or you pick out any descriptions of the rain and the wind. And from the question, we know that all you need to be doing is picking out words and phrases. So you're looking for the language devices, and then you're looking at how has the writer created it. So basically, what they want from this question is a really nice focused language analysis. And the easiest, simplest way to do that is to follow the formula of speed, which hopefully you will know. Now, some people aren't massive fans of speed for some strange reason. Um, and the reason why we recommend it for this question is because when you look at the mark scheme, it is the simplest, easiest way to, way to pick up those high marks. Um, if you look at band two, it's got references made to a number of words and phrases, some explanations are given, and effects identified in both parts of the question. So you've got to pick out a few words and phrases, you've got to explain them, you've got to identify the effects, um, and you've got to um, show that you understand how language works. So that's just to get into band two. If you're wanting to get up to those top marks, then you want a wide ranging discussion, and speed is the way to kind of to make sure that you do that wide ranging discussion. Um, and if you're looking at developing your discussion, then it means that you're going to hit on that next part of it, demonstrate the writer's reasons for using them. Um, you can then give an overview of the paragraph's overall effect, comment on the language features, know your vocabulary. So if you are using speed, you know that straight away you're hitting on at least band two and it's giving you the scope to get up to band one. So if you can't remember what speed is, if you don't know how to do it, it's basically a flashier, better version of PEE. So you have your signpost, your point, your evidence, evaluate and discuss. The signpost is a really, really simple bit that goes on at the beginning of your PEE paragraph, which is just where you signpost to the writer, to the examiner, sorry, um, what it is you're talking about. So firstly, in paragraph four, and it's just using those little connectives, saying next or additionally or furthermore. Um, finally, just to kind of launch them into your paragraph, then you make a point about what you're going to analyse. So this is where you pick out the language devices and you say what language feature is it that they have used. You put your evidence in, try and embed it nicely, use a little phrase to introduce it, a quote to show this is or this is illustrated by. And then the evaluate and the discuss are the important bits. These are the bits that are going to get you marked. So really think about having a bottom heavy paragraph where you're evaluating, discuss, make up the main body of it. Um, and this is where you comment on the effect on the reader, or you say what it suggests, or you tell what the writer's showing, and really try and pick apart that evidence that you put in. And discuss is just where you take it that bit further, so you don't just leave it on, well, so what? You don't leave it on, so what? You take it a bit further, you add some more evidence, you explore a word, you take it further, or you look at what 
something might suggest or what the writer's intentions might be. So basically, it just gives you that systematic approach so you know you're getting those marks. Um, if you do it, you're less likely to miss out on higher marks and it means you've got a number of points. Um, so if you get three speed paragraphs in, three for A, three for B, you know you've done everything you need to get into at least band two and hopefully band one. So a top tip for using speed um, is to learn your language terminology. It's a really e easy uh, revision technique for this question. Um, so when you're making your point and you're saying what features you can spot in those words and phrases, then throw in um, a bit of terminology to really impress the examiner. And you'll see <coughs> in the description of band one, they are expecting that you to use the vocabulary accurately. So, make a glossary is useful for the literature section of your exam as well, of all the language terms that you know, and really learn their definitions. It's important to know them really confidently because you don't want to be learning, uh, you don't want to be putting in the wrong terms and using them inaccurately. Um, there's no point in using terminology if you're not going to use it accurately, but it's a really easy thing to learn. And, you know, even if it's just learning what similes, metaphors, and personification are, and knowing the difference between an adjective and a verb then that's at least giving you something to go on and you pretty much guarantee there's going to be one of those examples in the extract somewhere. So a really useful tip um, to make sure that your points are made accurately but obviously you don't want to feature spot you can take it a little bit further than just using the terms. So now I'm ready to approach the question um, and I've got my paragraph in front of me so the first thing I need to do is select my three words and phrases that I'm going to use to build my three speed paragraphs for part A. So I've got paragraph four in front of me and I'm going to scan through it and just read it out and pick out which words are really good at building that description of the appearance of the cloud um, and the atmosphere. So the first bit I think um, I would pick out probably is this one. It has no anger yet but it's full of menace. And I thought that was quite a good one because first of all I know the technique there personification because the cloud itself has been given emotion and the emotion seem to show that it's dangerous there's no anger yet but it's full of menace so we've definitely got a sense of the cloud being personified as a presence of the person there waiting to unleash its fury. Um, there's also loads more that we could pick out but I think the next one that I quite liked here was that terrible bowl of blackness just because there's lots in that really short phrase. So I picked out the fact that the adjective there, terrible, is really effective because it's just building up again that atmosphere of it being really ominous and dangerous. Um, there's alliteration there as well, bowl of blackness. So those buff sounds really kind of come out. They're quite plosive sounds. They make an angry sound as you say them. Um, and the metaphor as well, the, the fact that it's described as a bowl, because obviously we're looking at the appearance of the cloud, um, it gives us a visual image of it there in the bowl shape kind of hanging down. So I thought that was a good quotation. And then my third one that I've picked out, and again, you could pick different ones. There's no rule. The examiners don't have three quotations that they expect you to do. They've got a list of, of lots of them, um, and they're told to give credit to any good examples. So I thought that last one, how small I am on the great canvas of nature, was another good one. Um, and again, it's a metaphor, so we don't want to be too re rep repetitive here. Um, but I quite like the image that it creates a slightly different. It's an artist canvas. So it makes it seem like it's a thing of beauty and wonder, which kind of contrasts the other two things we've said, about it being a bit dangerous um, and fearful. So that's paragraph four. I picked up my three quotations for there. And then I'm going to pick up my three quotations from paragraph seven as well. So exactly the same. Um, I think most magnificent I've ever known is quite a good one to describe the storm here. Um, and I've picked out because I know my terminology. Not just any adjective, it's the most magnificent, so it's a superlative. And it suggests a real sense of awe from the writer, he's really in awe of this storm. Um, I quite liked as well, for a bit of contrast, the crouching apology of a man, because it's a nice metaphor. It's almost the opposite of um, personification, it's dehumanised him into a single action, that action of crouching and apologising. It's almost like he's become pitiful against the power of the storm. So that's a really good um, example. We can build a great speed paragraph out of and we can really explore and pick apart. Um, and I always say, if you're stuck for language devices, if you really find them difficult to spot, then look for similes, because similes are so easy, because straight away you look for the word like or you look for the word as. So we've got like a demented hail of shrapnel, so it's nice and easy to spot that we've got a simile there. 
Um, and I like the fact that the word demented, again, continues the idea of personification. Um, it's uncontrolled, it's a bit mad, and the hail of shrapnel brings in war imagery. So, from the two paragraphs, we've picked out our three examples from each, and I've just annotated them with the techniques we use, just as a little reminder to myself not to forget. And then that'll help me when it comes to... So if you know what needs to be in speed, it should be really simple to follow that speed structure. So start off with your signpost, and it can be as simple as in paragraph four, or it could be firstly in paragraph four, however you want to do it. So there's your signpost. Then you're going to move on to your point, and you're going to try and throw in your terminology if you know it confidently. If not, then just put the writer uses words and phrases, um, but try and say specifically, how is it presenting it? How And answer the question. Look at what the question was asking you to. So it's asking you to how does the writer present um, the appearance of the cloud? So I put the writer uses personification to present the cloud as a threatening presence. So I've answered the question there. I've used some terminology. Then I'm going to throw in my quotation. I'm going to try and embed it a little bit so it flows nicely, so it does hold up the joke the paragraph. So when he uses the description, it has no anger yet, but it's full of menace, which leads me on quite nicely to my evaluation. So we've just got a really small, short section of signpost point and evidence because we don't want to put too much. We want to get straight to the point and get into our evaluation and discussion, which is where we're going to pick up our marks. So it has no anger yet, but it's full of menace creates an image of the cloud which is almost playing with emotion and that's what we said when we were annotating it. Now we want to pick out what specific words suggest to us. So as the word menace suggests it's threatening to unleash its anger. So I know what the word menace means. I'm trying to think well what does that make me picture in my head? Um, but it's just waiting for the right moment to do so. So that's what that description makes me think in my head of the cloud. Um, the writer uses the word yet, it is clear, it's not a question of if, but when. So by evaluating it, I've really picked apart what image does it create, what does it make me think of, and I'm trying to think what's the personification as well, why use that technique, what does that make me think of. And then I want to try and just take it a little bit further, not just leave it on so what, but then discuss uh, what I've said in my evaluation. So I'm going to finish this off with... This shows the reader how much more intimidating the storm must have felt to the writer as he felt like he was at the mercy of its emotions. So I've just kind of put in why has the writer chosen to do it in my discussion. Just kind of wrap it up and really think about the, the decisions that the writer's made. So I'm thinking of this not just as a nice little story, but a crafted piece of writing that's meant to have an effect on me as a reader. So that's all you need to do for one simple speed paragraph. If you just follow that formula, um, hopefully that will give you everything you need to get those top marks. And you just do that exact same thing for your other two examples from paragraph four and your three examples from paragraph seven, leaving you with six speed paragraphs altogether. So to leave you then with a few top tips, things to remember for this question. As I've just said, three speed paragraphs in part A, three speed paragraphs for B. That is the most important thing to take away from it, and that's all you need to do every time with this question. But to take it a little bit further, um, try not to repeat yourself when you're exploring the different examples. Try and make different points. So if you're thinking about three speed paragraphs, try not to have three similar metaphors that are all um, giving an impression of the storm or the cloud or whatever it is being angry. Try and think about maybe different reactions, different sides. So, for example, we might be looking at the way he's in awe of the storm, but he's also um, got a sense of fear of it. And try and make sure you're looking for those different subtleties and looking at that overall impression that's been created. And at the same time, as I'm saying, develop your points and try and add lots of detail and try and pick apart the language. You've still got to think, actually, at this point, this question's only worth 10 marks. Um, and try and make your points as succinctly as possible so you don't waste time and you don't lose time on it as well. So you can make a good variety of points, but you don't waste time with flowery, over-the-top language. Make one point, move on to the next and the next, and try and just avoid repeating yourself um, so that you can get good, clear, succinct points going. Um, at the same time, try and comment on the effects of specific words. Not every word, obviously. 
but try and pick out you know two words per quotation that have a really strong effect um, and just try and say what image they create for you in your head and in your discussion if you can or maybe break it down into one for evaluate and one for discuss try and be specific about mentioning the effect on the reader and the writer's intentions so you show the examiner you're not just thinking that this is a nice little story but that something's been crafted and that something has a specific effect on the reader and you're really thinking about those elements because that is ultimately what they want to see from you um, and think about it in terms of those bottom heavy paragraphs where the evaluation and the discussion are basically focusing on what image does it create for you as a reader what mood what atmosphere what feeling and what the writer's intentions are and when you're talking about the effect on the reader don't say things like it makes you want to read on or create a good image or it is effective try and be really specific about those effects try and create talk about the mood the feeling the atmosphere um, and that will help you get up into those higher marks so hopefully that's given you um, a good bit of help and advice on this question it really should be easy if you know how to do it and it's an easy one to practice with any kind of text with a magazine article with a newspaper article with a story just pick one out at random pick a paragraph and try and analyze the effect of the of the words and phrases in it so good luck with this one